Hey, Taz, when I'm your age, will I have a girlfriend? Are you sure you want to be asking that question? Would it cause a rift in some sort of timeline malarkey? Is this your way of avoiding the question? A am I in the wrong for being concerned about the fabric of reality? Why won't you answer the question, huh, Daz? Do you have a girlfriend? Yeah, Daz, do you have a girlfriend or not? Guys, can you please leave me alone? A herd of personal space? Puppet, think we should make this the next video topic? Have you ever made a better suggestion before? Daz, what do you think? Alright, top 10 girlfriends in video games. It is the month of February after all, so let's jump on the trending bandwagon early with a little bit of romance, as much as admiring fictional characters gets. Before we start, here's some rules we've got set. First things first, the title of girlfriend is ranked only to those who are actual love interests from within a game. This isn't just the top 10 best girls, so no, Samus Aran is not your girlfriend. She is an independent bounty hunter who would scoff in the face of your romantic advances. Plus, her whole thing with Adam seems awfully convoluted, sounding like a mutual trust thing. They have good chemistry, sure, but she implicates him as her best friend or a father figure, and I'm just not counting that, right? Crushes, however, I will be mentioning, if not at least on the side. Also, only one girl per franchise, let's not clog up this list, eh? Princess Peach, one of the very first females of the gaming world, the royal heir of the Mushroom Kingdom and other half of the most iconic video game guy, is absolutely trash! I don't care what the internet statistics say. Our true number 10 spot is the second in command, Princess Daisy. Yeah, she's rare and a tad on the screechy side, but she's loyal and consistent. And a guy like Luigi is lucky to have her. I mean, with all the crap he goes through in his life, look at how much of a smile she puts on his face. Plus, she's got some rocking style. While Peach is all up in someone else's castle, Daisy is out on the field, no holds barred, bashing it out like the rest of the mushroom civilians. Mario may be number one, but he'll always be chasing a dream. Princess Daisy is the true treasure, making you realise the girl you'll like the most is often already your best friend. This one goes out to all those dating games where you get to pick your own out of a group of potential relationships. Whether you're into medieval ladies, alien ladies, or cosplay ladies, this archetype can always provide a well-written and investing character, who you may perhaps relate to or admire on a personal level due to the traits and stories of their lives. And really, I couldn't tell you exactly who would be the best one out of all of these choices. Truly, there's a virtual girl out there for anyone. It doesn't matter if you like them big or small, loud or shy, even if you don't like girls at all, that's cool too. And what kind of person would I be if I told you exactly who the right one would be to choose anyway? It's Makoto, it has to be Makoto, you can't change my mind! Makoto best girl! Am I gonna get in trouble for that one day? Life is Strange is quite the experience, and it looks like it's come quite a long way. But one of the first things it did that really gripped people was make people truly feel like they could relate to the characters and their trials through the well-produced writing. Hella, 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 lame. Now, sure, the story of a girl that can reverse time and has to save the town from a devastating tornado is great and all, but what people really enjoyed was the relationship between Max Caulfield and Chloe Price. The two go through the world after having not seen each other for years and really try to stick it to the man. And many players really connected with the character of Chloe after realising the causes of her hardened, edgy exterior. And though I may not have personally become attached to her as many others did, the final choice forced players to either kill Chloe or destroy the town, and from the sounds of things, it was actually a hard decision for a lot of people. And if so many would literally kill hundreds for one girl, then maybe she's doing something right. Warren never stood a chance. Before Persona 5, there was Catherine, a creepy dream sequence of a game depicting decisively challenged Bumble Vincent Brooks as he is forced through quite the relationship trials as he suddenly meets this mysterious girl who seems to have immaculate chemistry with him, though he's too tripped out to understand what's going on half the time. Now, sure, she turns out to be some kind of succubus that takes on the form of any man's deepest desires, and sure, she's the cause of several men dying in their sleep due to putting them in lethal dream sequences with giant blocks to climb while being chased by your deepest fears, but let's be honest, 
She's still better than Catherine with a K. Now that's just toxic. A new girlfriend's gonna need to know your details. What music do you listen to? Uh, since when were you a love guru? Are you sure you can handle that information? What's this? You like listening to music made by YouTubers? How self-absorbed with this website are you? <laughs> <laughs> Amy Rose has gone through a lot. It's adamantly clear that she adores Sonic, but she's never truly been successful thanks to Sonic's way past cool personality. But as a character, she's actually pretty awesome. Sticking around for 28 years is already pretty commendable, if not extremely worrying, but she's also taken the form of many iterations of Amy. Is she just a pink hedgehog? Is she some crazy driver chick? Or can she actually hold her own wielding her giant hammer? Over the years, she's actually become a lot more strong and able to stand up as almost a rival to Sonic. Sure, no one's a fan of the obsessive and annoying weak type, but having someone as powerful as Amy Rose as an ally and a love interest couldn't be the worst thing in the world. Though Sonic X Amy is the best version. Just never get on her bad side. Let him go! Hey, if you're liking my stuff so far, consider subscribing. I'm also taking part in a comedy web series competition with the Biscuit Barrel over on punkinary.com. We could really use the bumping numbers from you signing up and following the show. If we get noticed, we get some big entertainment connections, which is pretty cool. Plus, more content for you to enjoy every Friday. Check a look. Bit of an oddball in this list, but To The Moon is one of those beautiful gems of an indie game that can really tug at your heartstrings if you're that kind of person. And River Wiles hosts an incredibly well-written and realistic relationship with her husband as we witness their experience of growing old together. We see how they met as children, how they bonded over the years with origami, and how they moved to a little house with a lighthouse overlooking it. She doesn't stand out as a particularly inspiring person career-wise, and she's mostly just a normal human being, but the way her story intertwines with her husband's and we find out how events unfold through their lives makes me hope that once I reach that age, I'll have a relationship like that supporting me along the way. Hopefully my fate won't be quite as tragic or emotional though. We'll see. Ah, Doki Doki Literature Club. One of the most recent additions to the video game dating world. Now I could just go along and tell you who of the four are truly the best person to choose, that just wouldn't be right, because you don't choose. Your hand will always be forced to lean towards Monica. Not because of the author clearly having a favorite pick, but because Monica herself is alive and knows that she is within a game that she can control. She loves you. Everybody loves you, sure, but Monica loves you and she'd do anything for you. Write you a lovely poem, introduce you to a new club, make her rivals all kill themselves, play a song on the piano, or really just let you be free. She really does it all. While many people on this list may earn their ranking due to just how they are as a person, Monica fights for her place through sheer determination. No one would do as much as she would. And even when she's deleted everything else in the game, her final move is to let you go from an eternal hell alone with her. She even loves you enough to let you go. Or maybe you're the type that could call that paradise. It's an acquired taste. Oh my god, what is this? Daz, why is this in your iTunes library? Oh no, what is it? It's called Nightmen. Do you remember it? Uh, don't. And now he's here for And you liked this song? Haven't you been 14 before? No, I'm a sock. Remember? What's this one? Surprise? Uh, no, no, don't! Bet you weren't expecting this, but Patricia from GTA 5 is our number three slot for the simple fact that she can handle the madman that is Trevor Phillips. The dude is a total psycho, infamous for his random outburst, intense violence, and a general lack of humanity other than keeping promises. But when Patricia is kidnapped from her husband, who happens to be a Mexican gang leader, Trevor seems to be somewhat cured, or at least more docile than ever before. Trevor truly falls in love with her, treats her with respect, and she does the same. And though their relationship can only remain brief because of some nagging gang leader pestering for his wife's return or something, the way this all plays out is truly eye-opening. 
Patricia Madrazo is a superwoman in subtle Roman Catholic clothing. It's the zombie apocalypse. Everyone you know has been killed and reanimated, but your cheerleader Captain Girlfriend is here to rescue you, Juliet Starling, aka Chainsaw Wielding Zombie Hunter. She's a tad wacky, but she's passionate and motivational, ready to bounce into action with all sorts of kicks, flips, and licks of her lollipop stick. And even if you're already doomed from this mortal world, bitten by a zombie and destined for death, not a problem, with a simple procedure of decapitation from the thyroid up and you're good as new! Even with just a head for a boyfriend, Juliet Starling keeps Nick by simply keeping his only remaining member attached to her hip. I'm sure from then on it's only a happily ever after. And now it's time for our honourable mentions, don't worry I'll keep this quick. One of three, Olimar's wife. Very much an invisible figure in the Pikmin games, Olimar's wife simply is talked about through Olimar's notes to himself and in email form in the sequel. She looks after the family and helps everyone get by while Olimar is off on his own trials. Though don't give her too much money, she might spend it all at once. Number 2, Fiora from Xenoblade Chronicles. She seems like a nice girl, a great fit for nerdy robot obsessed antisocial shulk, sweet and innocent too. They could work quite nicely to make a cute pa- OH GOD SHE'S BEEN IMPALED! Oh, never mind, she's all good. Spoilers. Now fully functional with new robotic parts. You know, maybe they'd make an even better pair now, all things considered. And 3 out of 3 goes to Isabel from Animal Crossing. Only being hinted at having a crush on the villager, she's a hard worker, productive and perfectly organised. Plus she's an adorable little thing. The perfect partner perhaps, but let's face it, You'll never know. And now for our number one spot. Alright, ready? Shouldn't you take this more seriously? The Legend of Zelda. How could I not mention The Legend of Zelda? And with a protagonist like Link, there is a giant arsenal of women to pick from across many different incarnations. Will it be Zelda or Zelda or Mifa or Zelda or Zelda, Saria, Midna or maybe Tetra? Oh, oh wait, no, that's, that's just Zelda. Well, under most circumstances, I would usually say that I'm a stickler for the non-canonical crushes on the side when it comes to my personal favourite Link partner, but this is across every Zelda game ever. So I'm afraid winning by a landslide has got to be Zelda. Oh right, yeah, I mean the Skyward Sword one. Yes, forget mature princess with a real duty, forget tomboy leader pirate. I just cannot get over the childhood friend trope. The Skyward Sword incarnation of Zelda is the most adorable and fun Zelda to ever grace the franchise. She's playful, she sings, she loves animals, and she's not afraid to get in someone's face if she has to. Plus she has some real chemistry with Link that's just too wholesome to not enjoy. This ain't an argument of hair colour or game design, to me, the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword Zelda is and probably will always be the number one best girlfriend in all of video games. Change my mind, I dare ya. Happy now guys, can we stop asking questions now? Were you trying to be cringy? Yeah, am I really destined to grow up to be such a loser? Are you kidding me? You pushed me into this corner and then insult me for the product I make? That's how that's gonna go, huh? Couldn't you have done it in a less losery way? Yeah, don't you think you could have done this without making me look like a baboon in a few years? <sighs> Will I ever win? <laughs> Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you'd like to support the Biscuit Barrel or see more of me, there will be links in the description as well as cards on screen now. And since it's a new month, here's a verbal shout out to my patrons. If you become one, you'll get to see the first monthly blooper reel of my IRL skits. There's a lot of them. Thank you to the Shepherd256, Dylan Brill, Dazzle Luke, Kitty, Farian, Mel Velasco, Frozen Berries, Daniel, Daniel Suzuki, and Yoshi. I'm gonna find a more interesting way of doing these shoutouts. I've been doing overlapping since my old LPing days. If you have any fun suggestions, do let me know. Otherwise, I shall end it off here. My name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit. Hey, wait! None of this was in the preview! Shh, shh! The future lied!